If you can read a tape measure, you can read a pattern. I'm Sharon from the Stitch Foundry and I'm going to show you how to read a written crochet pattern. Sometimes it can seem a bit overwhelming or you can look at a crochet pattern and it just seems like gibberish and you don't know where to start. I want to demystify patterns and show you that if you can read a tape measure, you can read a pattern. But first of all, I've got a free pattern for you to follow along with if you want. It's my Easy Crochet Cal and you can find that in the link in the description box. So a crochet pattern is an abbreviated form of instructions basically. It also contains everything else you need to know. So it has your materials, that's your yarn and hook, gauge which we will go through. It also actually contains a list of the abbreviations used in the pattern. So you don't actually need to worry about learning all the abbreviations, you just need to refer back to the guide in the pattern. The instructions are written in a kind of shorthand. They use abbreviations for the stitches, so instead of single crochet it will say SC and this is where actually if you can read a tape measure then you can read a crochet pattern. Do you remember learning IN means inches or CM means centimeters and it's just it's just the same. Same as with a recipe like ounces OZ where does that even come from? That's to give you a bit of confidence that you can read a tape measure so you can read a crochet pattern. It's like learning to crochet. I have taught a number of people to crochet who have told me at some point they felt like throwing it across the room. And in fact, my daughter did throw it across the room in frustration because it's uncomfortable. It is frustrating and uncomfortable learning something new. Know that you will be able to do it. First step when you get your pattern is have a read through and I mean read through all of it including the notes. Now I don't know if it's just me but when I see notes in a pattern well what I used to do is I thought that was kind of optional extra and I would just skip over that bit but actually the notes is where the designer puts everything that doesn't kind of fit into another category that they want you to know about the pattern. So it's kind of important. It should actually be called important notes. I don't know, just big capital letters read this. First of all you'll notice the kind of introduction that's always on the first page. Then get into the construction. This is telling you how the pattern's made, whether it's in rows or in the round. We then go on to the materials. The pattern should give you all the information you need to substitute the yarn. So rather than balls, a pattern really should give you weight, you know, how much of the yarn, and also in yardage or meterage. Next thing it tells you is the hook size. This leads on to gauge. Gauge helps you to see if you'll end up with the same size project as stated in the pattern. And there's more on gauge and how to measure and work out gauge later in the video. One of the most important things you'll find possibly in the notes or somewhere in the pattern that you'll need to know is if the pattern's written in UK or US terms. Now I'm in the UK but I use US terms. If the pattern doesn't mention it, a really easy way to tell is look to see if there's a single crochet in the pattern because there's no single crochet in UK crochet. If you see single crochet, that is a US pattern. If you're not sure and you can't tell, not written anywhere, you can contact the designer this is a good tip in general. If you come across something in a pattern that you don't understand or it doesn't kind of fit in or it doesn't, you can't make it work, contact the designer, ask. Honestly, they don't mind or they shouldn't mind. I'm embarrassed to say the amount of times I've had to have people contact me for clarification. I hope not so much now, but on earlier patterns where I wasn't as experienced and you know, mistakes happen. Sometimes it's a typo but sometimes it's an actual mistake and it gets through the tech editing, testing, double and triple checking. I don't know how but mistakes happen. So 
don't be afraid to ask. And if you can't ask the designer or you ask, you don't get any response, ask on a forum or a message board, you know, a Facebook group. My biggest tip really when you're starting out is to write out the pattern in longhand. It helps you to kind of translate and learn the stitches as you go. Chain two, double crochet in the same stitch. Double crochet in the same stitch. Two double crochet cluster in the last stitch. So that is how I would write out the beginning. I know this looks like a lot, and you can see why crochet patterns are written in abbreviations and in abbreviated forms, because if it was all written out in longhand, it would be quite long and wordy. That's a really good way to practice. Gauge is a measurement of rows and stitches. And it's normally four inch or 10 centimeters square. So you make up a swatch or you start the pattern and then after you've got your four inches, have a count and see if you've got the same amount of stitches and same rows as in the pattern. So if you have too many stitches or more stitches than in the pattern, your tension is quite tight so you can go up a hook size. If you don't want to, that's fine. Just know that your project will probably turn out smaller. If you don't have enough stitches or you've got too many, uh, not enough rows, your tension is loose. So your project's going to turn out bigger, go down a hook size. You don't need to even make a swatch if it's for something where the size doesn't matter. If the size does matter, like for a garment, or if you've got a certain amount of yarn, don't want to run out of yarn, then do a gauge swatch and adjust your hook size accordingly. So just remember, if size matters and yarn quantity matters, do a gauge swatch. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Next section is our abbreviations and a good crochet pattern should always give you a list of all the abbreviations in the pattern. I've got some examples of abbreviated stitches and phrases you might come across in a written crochet pattern coming up at the end of the video. And special stitches are when a designer has used a stitch that's not commonly used or a stitch that's been modified or altered in some way and it actually gives you the full instructions for making that stitch. So the abbreviation list doesn't, it assumes you know what those stitches are because they're the most commonly used stitches but the special stitches are the ones that aren't as commonly used so it will kind of explain how to make those stitches. I've got some examples of some abbreviated forms of instructions to kind of demystify and explain what they mean. Various brackets or parentheses can mean to repeat or they can also mean all in one stitch. So check in the notes. When you see an asterisk that indicates a repeat. When you see two asterisks or a double asterisk that indicates that you end the last repeat if you see something like three double crochet, that means double crochet in each of the next three stitches. It doesn't usually mean three double crochet in one stitch. If it was to be three double crochet in one stitch, it should either have brackets around it or it should tell you that it's in one stitch. So I hope that's really helped you demystify written patterns. Please let me know any questions you have Put them in the comments and I'll answer them. If you see a question in the comments that you know the answer to, feel free to answer. That would be really great. Thanks for watching. Happy crocheting!